So this is the anti-think piece. Um, I wanted a satire vehicle because I grew up with Radio 4 comedy. It was what inspired me to start writing to begin with. But this idea would follow a similar pattern to my blog that I did about the paper that I read on my commute, The Metro, that I did for a couple of years, where I'd take a story in the press at the moment, important ones and fluff like the one that I've got this week, and deconstruct how it's presented. It's more about journalistic technique employed in the British news than the actual events of the news itself. Because I find that more interesting, because news is something that we tend to take at face value, and we don't realise that because it's written by humans, not data compiling robots, there is always a reasoning and an agenda behind it. This one will be done in my usual stickman style for like two or three minutes a week, whenever I see a story that interests me. This is the anti-think piece, giving UK news outlets a pat on the head. This week, the Daily Telegraph tried to pass off as a piece of financial journalism the absolutely startling piece of news that the British cheap tat shop, Poundland, are saying that 2014 will be their biggest Christmas ever. Oh my god. Really? Oh my god, I can't believe this. Wow, it's like, like, think of the implications of this piece of news. Do you know what this means? Okay, okay, let me explain. Basically, people give money to shops in exchange for products that are sold by that shop. But as opposed to, say, last Christmas, when assumedly the same thing happened, this time round specifically, more people will give more money to a specific shop. Look, I've done a diagram in case this is too complicated. I'm assuming that they got a psychic to predict the future in this case, as Christmas 2014 hasn't actually happened yet. This has been a stew bag full fact. I know it's hard to understand this fine piece of journalism, which is especially made more complicated when the article starts with a quote from Poundland's chief executive saying the following, It's like Christmas at Poundland all the time, so this Christmas it will be like five all at once. Jesus guy, thanks for simplifying it so my tiny mortal non-Poundland brain can understand it. Christ, too difficult. Now I've got to add some more layers to my diagram. So, that's a first Christmas, and now here's two Christmases happening at the same time. Now let's add a third. Ooh, and now a fourth. God, so many dimensions colliding. Ah, my brain fell out my nose. Yeah, I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this complicated article. Maybe you could express it in a formula. Nah, still not getting it. Guess I'm not clever enough for broadsheet press. I should stick with the tabloids. But all I know is we should bow down, everybody. Hug each other and cry. Everything will be okay. For this will be the biggest Christmas for Poundland ever. If sales projections keep going this well, then hopefully by next Christmas, that will be the biggest Christmas yet. And then they will continue on with the biggest Christmas yet. So by the year 2153, the Poundland Christmas will have got so earth-shatteringly massive that they'll be putting up statues to the Lord of Poundland. And by 2254, we'll have revolutionaries fighting the glorious regime of the almighty Poundland. And Poundland will become so big that it'll get crushed inwards by its own massiveness and fall into the sea. And the moral of the story is, be big this Christmas, Poundland, but not too big. Otherwise, you will fall into the sea. So yeah, this piece of journalism is available from the Daily Telegraph, British broadsheet newspaper meant to be read by people over the age of 12, with actual critical faculties and everything, and was definitely not an attempt to pass off a corporate press release as actual news in any way. No, it wasn't. Honest.